Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to go over the player IDs of Pernet. This is a very important concept for you to understand when working with Pernet, as it's really what's used sort of similar to what you would use connections in other systems if you're familiar with that, but it has a little bit more functionality than just connections. So first of all, player IDs is essentially an abstraction away from connections. So for example, bots will also have player ID or disconnected players will still keep their player ID even if they're not connected. It's essentially a you know player identifier, hence the name, more than it is really anything else. So if you're familiar with other networking systems using connections like Fishnet or Mirror, it's similar and you'll use it similar in a lot of cases, for example, when calling target RPCs or when dealing with ownership, but it's a little bit different as it holds a little bit more functionality than normally. So first of all, let's talk about the persistent part of it. So on your network manager, you can actually change the cookie scope. And this is essentially what changes persistence. So you can see if I drop it down here, you can change how the cookies are handled or essentially how the persistence is handled. So for example, if you say live with connections, that means once a player disconnects, his player ID is gone. It, it won't be there anymore. There's no need to store it anymore. But if you have it live with the process that means as long as he doesn't close the game he will still be the same player or you can store it persistently which will essentially store it in his computer's player preferences um, which essentially means that even if he closes the game and he opens the game joins back he'll still be seen as the exact same player this is essentially similar to how you know for example a steam profile would do it in this case and a really good way of actually showing this is i have my test set up here back from the animating scene which is the host and this is a client over here moving around and you can see here if i drag the client over here you can see the client moves and if i disconnect on the client you notice how he disappears from the host and if i connect again he will join back you know in a new spot have a new player created as you would normally in a lot of networking solutions however with pernet it's actually very easy to just handle reconnects because we have this persistent data that lives with the process in our case the unity editor so I've just made a test rule set here. This is just for me to be able to change the rules. I've essentially just copied the unsafe rule set and it's the exact unsafe rule set. And all you want to do is under the default spawn rules, I can just disable the despawn if owner disconnected. This means that any objects that are owned by this player uh, won't despawn. So now that I've changed this and that's really all, I'll just connect again. You can see the client is here running around and you can see when I stop the client editor completely. So in his screen, he completely disconnects, the scene goes back to normal, but you can see it remains on the editor in the same state. And then if I join back again, you can see now he just took ownership of the exact same object that still remained in the scene. So no matter where I go, no matter how I do it, I disconnect, I reconnect, and I'm back as the same owner and it's easy as that to handle reconnects and this is also why when the player connection state changes in the network manager you actually have an is reconnection pool so that you can easily handle you know uh, normal connections from reconnections differently in case you want to catch up somehow so this is just one functionality of the player id and this is really the main one so the persistence of the player id is really the main functionality next to of course the bots now one of the other big things that you can do with player ids is the ownership and handling of ownership so let's get into that a little bit and how that works so first of all, let's talk about what ownership affects and the, I guess, essentially the concept of ownership. So conceptually, ownership is actually pretty easy to understand. It's just, you know, you own something. Now, what does it mean to own something? Well, similar to how if my car is my car, I'm the one who's in control of my car. The same thing acts here, you know, so for example, as the player, you know, the, the guy sitting in front of the screen or the connection as the computer, you should probably see it as the computer. Uh, the computer will then, you know, for example, your computer owns your player character, my computer owns my player character. And that's why I can control mine, you can control yours. That's the concept of ownership. Now, ownership affects a few things. One of the things that it affects is, for example, the per net default components. So if we go into just our animated character, you can see, for example, we have a few of them here. We have the network transform, for example, which you can see by by default is owner auth and this little bool now means that if you're the owner you control it if this is disabled it means that the server is what controls it and owners will never control it regardless of who owns it this also means that if we change ownership let's say that i own the character and then all of a sudden for some reason you start owning the character well now you control it instead of me at least on the network transform the same thing for example you can see the network ownership toggle does it like that the auto syncing component which was called network reflection that we also have uh, also has a little bool for ownership and that's essentially multiple per net components um, also the animator which we have in here that you know can also have a bool for his own role. Now one of the things that's a little bit different if you watch the video on network identities I would probably urge you to go do that as it gives a good overview of network identities um, but essentially ownership in Pernet works a little differently depending on your network rules. By default, obviously, if I take ownership of, let's say, the network transform network identity, I take ownership of everything that is on this player, which also encapsulates this network transform, which also encapsulates this ownership toggle. But 
It doesn't have to be like that. It, we could actually technically have a setup where I control or I'm the owner of the network transform, but you're the owner of the network animator or whatever. If you have a bunch of your own scripts, like for example, you could be in charge of the player movement, but I could be in charge of the player box spawning, for example, or I could be in charge of the shooting while you're in charge of the movement. Again, you can actually separate ownerships, and this is very unique to Pernod. I at least haven't seen it in other network systems. So individual identities can have their own owner. It doesn't have to be the same owner. And this is a bit of a unique concept. It's a little easier, and I think as a beginner to Pernod or networking in general, you should probably think of ownership as a whole object. So, you know, when just keep the default network rules. And when you take ownership of anything on the player, you'll just take ownership of everything. It's It should be as easy as that, and I think you should probably stick to that if you're uh, new and you don't need sort of unique ownership functionality. Another thing ownership also affects is, for example, the sync types of Pernod. So for example, if we make a, let's say, private sync list, and this will hold a list of integers, and this will be my list, and we'll just start it up as a new sync list. Now, in here, for example, actually, if we serialize it, even easier, because that'll kind of show it, uh, in here, you can of course set up all. You can of course set up the default owner auth. So I could, for example, just set this to true, and that means now it'll be owner auth. Um, but we can also go into the editor and change it there because obviously it's serializable. Um, so this is the test behavior. So if I just go and I find my player, I add my test behavior. You can see now with my list, you can see I now have a owner auth toggle. This also changes, you know, who can actually modify the list. Uh, we can also, you know, similar to sync vars, sync dictionaries, all the sync types essentially can be owner auth. Similar to how a server RPC by default, at least depending on your network rules, a server RPC is actually also owner auth. So you can see if I do require ownership, by default, this is actually true. And I can do private, void add to list whatever we want to do let me just do the end value add that to the list um, and by default this will actually be true so if, if there's nothing here this would be true so for example if we try and run add to list here and we just add the number one this would only work and run if you are the owner of the object so essentially that would be basically the same as saying like this if it's owner however of course you can change that so you don't just require the owner so you do require ownership false and have this and now everybody who runs the unspawned will add a one to the list because they're asking the server to do it because it's not owner auth. And now lastly, as I've mentioned a couple of times, is the network rules. So if I just go back to our network rules, which we have here, the test rules, and actually change a bunch of things here. And for example, you can see default owner. You can see there is, for example, it can be the spawner or it can be none. You can see despawn auth, you can change, for example, you could set it up so only the owner can actually despawn, only the owner and the server can, for example, despawn. In the case of the unsafe rules, everybody can despawn everything. But as you can see in the network rules, you can really change quite a lot. And you can especially change like who can do what, for example, who can transfer ownership, who can assign ownership, who can remove ownership, and so on and so forth. And look a little, let's look a little bit into how we do that. So with any network identity, we can essentially just call the give ownership. And of course, if you just write ownership, you'll also be able to see that's give ownership and remove ownership. You can also check has give ownership authority. You can essentially check your network rule authority. Um, but for the most part, I'll just use give ownership. And in this case, for example, let's say that we want to give ownership to ourselves. We'll just do give ownership to the local player. And it's really as easy as that to give ownership. If, for example, you are spawning something, so let's just do a uh, private here. Let's do a network identity that we're spawning. Let's do my identity. And of course, we don't want to create that from default. So now we have my identity. Let's say we'll do var spawned identity and we'll instantiate a new identity, which will be this. Now we spawn a new identity, and now we can just take that new identity and immediately say give ownership. And this means now it will actually spawn with ownership, because obviously we're running this right after sequentially in the update loop, meaning these will run essentially computer-wise at the exact same time. Meaning that if you just give ownership to a local player in this case, this means that this object now, when everybody else see it, they will already immediately have the ownership and see the ownership. And of course, they will call the on ownership uh, changed method. So hopefully this is helpful to you and give you a little bit of an idea. You can, of course, make things owner auth yourself very easily by just doing the if owner check. So for example, on this, if we do update and then we do if we are not the owner, we'll return and there we go. And now only the owner will run log logic in here. And it's really as easy as that to work with ownership. So it's really just about, you know, you handle giving ownership to whoever should be in control. And of course, if it's your own components, just make sure you're not the owner. 
And of course, keep in mind the update loop won't run if you're not the owner. So if we just disable the component, if you're not the owner, which will be enabled equals to its owner. And like this, that means if you're not the owner, it'll just be a disabled component. Um, and last thing is, is controller. It's actually immensely useful. So let's do in the update loop, for example, we can say if is controller, or rather if we're not the controller, we'll return. Now, what does is controller mean? Essentially, it's the exact case of, are you the owner? Except if there is no owner, then it's the server. So it's essentially sort of a default state. In case, for example, let's say on our test behavior, we always want this logic to run for someone. This controller is actually very useful for this. Essentially, it'll tell you, is there an owner? Yes, am I the owner? No, then we'll return. If there is an owner, yes, and I am the owner, then we won't return, we are the controller. But if there is not an owner and we are the server, it'll also be the controller, if that makes sense. So essentially, it's just a way to check with sort of the server as a, a hypothetical owner in the case of no other owner. We can do this and you can also actually do is controller with capitalized letters. It'll come out as a method and you actually tell the method, is this meant to be owner or auth or not? So for example, if you want this to be owner or auth, we say true. If we don't want this to be owner or auth, we just say false. And essentially, this should only really get passed if you are the server. So I really hope this was helpful to you. This should hopefully be fairly easy to understand with ownership, but of course there can be a little bit more to it. Feel free to join the permanent Discord and ask questions if you have any. We're more than happy to help out over there. Also leave comments. We'll gladly respond to comments trying to help you down there and hopefully others in similar situations can see that this question has already been asked. Other than that, leave a like, comment and subscribe, and I just hope that you have a wonderful day.